Oh, hey, look at that. Matt Pat did a new video on the Smile Monster, which is great because it's freaking scary. I think I'm going to go click on that and watch it. Be right back. Okay. Well, so I did watch it, and as you can see here, I left a comment on it. Um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and read the comment comment aloud for you so you get an idea of what it is that I said here but um, I want to go into this a lot more in this video because I this is a pretty complex topic and I understand why it might have been hard to make a video about this now to summarize what was in the theory video before I get into it Matt Pat basically said that hallucinations are what the smile demon or virus or entity causes and so if you have hallucinations then you have schizophrenia and you need to treat your schizophrenia with your schizophrenia medication which you can access very easily that's i think the summary of the theory is defeat the smile virus slash demon with your schizophrenia medication now my comment says i have a relative who had schizophrenia and that illness took him from us brutally I'd suggest next time focusing on the symptoms instead of the diagnosis and maybe avoiding mentioning spe specific medications because that comes across as medical advice for if someone's experiencing these symptoms. The word I was expecting to hear in this video that I hardly or didn't hear at all was psychosis, which is a symptom that is actually occurring in SMILE. That is a hallucination on top of reality that the person cannot distinguish from reality. You can experience this with any number of mental illnesses, including bipolar, dementia, and PTSD, to name a few drastically different conditions that share it. Schizophrenia is complex and does not always involve this kind of behavior displayed in SMILE. But most of all, I hope you pay attention to this detail. You can experience everything in SMILE without being mentally ill, because psychotic hallucinations can occur from exposure to substances such as methane or natural gas, or psychoactives, which means a gas leak could cause something like this as well. And no amount of medication for schizophrenia will make that gas leak go away. RE medication, accessing it within hours is only if you can see a doctor same day who has the ability to prescribe it, or maybe has a sample in their office. To get diagnosed with schizophrenia, you're going to have to take a psychological evaluation, and the referral can be difficult to get and everything can get very expensive and takes a lot of time. So hearing that you can just take some anti-hallucination pills in a few hours or days, not in this world. Now, I want to make this caveat before I read the rest of my comment. I do realize that the character who is experiencing the symptoms in the story is, in fact, a therapist and could actually have access to um, some pills in the back room of the place that she's working in, like, you know, in the hospital. But she will still have to actually see a professional um, health expert to get diagnosed with schizophrenia and to actually be prescribed pills for schizophrenia. Until then, she's basically going to be stealing her patient's pills, which I really don't suggest. So, um, one of the things that Matt Pat said was that, uh, schizophrenics have trouble taking their medication, and, um, I want to, I talked a bit about that here as well. Um, you should research what it's like for a person to try to access the medication they need. A lot of people want to take their meds but have no access to them to begin with. And your video seems to assign all responsibilities regarding medication to the person who is suffering from a mental illness. Usually they have systems and mechanisms and maybe even other people there to help them stay on their meds. It's not just about deciding to take your pills. Not being alone is important because other people could help with this especially. If you look up coping techniques to deal with psychosis, you'll find more active solutions for the smile condition. But I suggest a little bit more time and care be put into it because, to be quite honest, this was pretty insensitive, especially if you understand how stigmatized schizophrenics are in media, which maybe you don't, and you need to do that research as well. I think this video could have been improved with efforts like this. And you know what? After that, I decided that why don't I just go ahead and make a video and explain things more fully. Now I want to talk about this comment and some things that I said in there and give a, a more thorough explanation of basically, you know, what I think needs to change. But first of all, I am not a mental health expert, and I think that Matt Pat should have taken a moment to tell the camera that he isn't either. Uh, maybe he did that and I missed it, but it's really important whenever you're talking about mental, mental health, mental illness, that um, you be very clear that you're not giving medical advice. I am not giving medical advice. You should see a doctor if you're experiencing any of these symptoms, which I think 
needs to be probably the number one recommendation. But if you have trouble seeing a doctor, for instance, what are you going to do? Uh, one of the things that I really had difficulty with was that it made things seem rather straightforward when it comes to mental health, and they're not. So um, diagnosis is very difficult when it comes to um, these kinds of symptoms. Like if you're experiencing psychosis, for instance, you're having hallucinations. Well, what else are you experiencing? Because that's that's shared by, like I said, m many different illnesses. And also uh, it can be kind of caused by conditions you're having that actually need to be treated since it's a, a symptom. Um, sometimes treating the symptom is not actually going to make the illness go away because the illness is something else. And of course, we got to talk about when it's not mental illness because uh, there's plenty of times when it could actually not be mental illness. And I mentioned a gas leak in the comment that I left. That's a very good um, example of when you can be exposed to something in your environment that causes this. It's no one's fault. It just happened. In fact, I'm a little surprised that Matt didn't think about that, considering that um, he's uh, done a, quite a lot of videos on Five Nights at Freddy's, a franchise that is notorious for its gas leaks. So um, if you want some fun... When it comes to an analyzing Five Nights at Freddy's, do a little research on gas leaks and the conditions that they can cause because it would tell you why so much of the weird stuff in that series can be so easily waved away by, oh, gas leaks, and no one investigates. So there's ar this article that I read on nowthisnews.com, which is a bit of a clickbaity place, but in this case, this is just, I don't know if anybody ever reported on anything like this before. Uh, Swamp Boy by Chris Newby. I'm going to leave a, a link in the description for you so that you can also take a look at this. So to kind of summarize what happens in, in here, um, a boy named Michael ends up having very, very strong hallucinations and a lot of paranoia and delusions. Um, at one point, he thinks he is Swamp Thing. Uh, he's reading the Swamp Thing comics, and they're kind of like... A coping mechanism for him but they also kind of set him off um and he also is um very much convinced that their cat is going to kill him um and he screams at it and says that it's an agent of the devil and stuff like that um he he has a, a lot of of concerning hallucinations he's aware of the fact that he's experiencing unreality but he's also not always aware of when he's experiencing unreality and it's very scary for him. The scariest thing is that they take him to the emergency room, they take him to various hospitals, they take him to a mental health institution, um, and he is never really diagnosed with anything conclusive. Like, at this point, he's got a diagnosis for major depressive disorder, but none of the medication is helping, nothing is really helping, He his, his symptoms will lull for, for a while and, and things will be normal, but then he'll have another episode and they won't know what to do. Uh, they, they try to commit him at one point to see if that will give him a facility that helps him and it really doesn't and in fact the facility can't handle him they don't really know what's going on with him they just put him in isolation or something whenever he's having difficulties so what do they do w what are they going to do whenever they can't really find what mental illness this boy has and how to treat it I mean, heck, there's a whole nother video that now this made on it that explains everything. And as you can see here, they spent $400,000 trying to figure out what was going on. So Michael's father is researching all of this very, very hard um, because the medical establishment has no one who can spend 24-7 trying to figure out what's going on with this. It's one of the things that happens is whenever you have a very complex health condition that's difficult to diagnose, you end up doing a lot of the research work. So if you're not capable of doing that, then someone else you know is going to have to do it for you. One of the big things is having social contact. This is one of the reasons. So um, it turns out that whenever researching schizophrenia, he saw that in males, symptoms of schizophrenia typically begin gradually during the late teens to early 20s, but Michael's psychosis had begun like a bolt out of the blue at age 14, so it had to be something else. Scott came across a condition that seemed to fit Michael's case, Pediatric Acute Onset Neuropsychiatric Syndrome, or PANS for short. 
He learned that it was a relatively new clinical label given to patients, mostly children, who have a dramatic, sometimes overnight, onset of neuropsychiatric symptoms, possibly triggered by infections, metabolic disturbances, or other inflammatory reactions. And obviously, this isn't going to be the answer for the smile virus, by the way. This isn't going to be the answer for everyone. In fact, this is specifically pediatric acute onset. So this is only for children that have it happen very suddenly. The context dramatically changes diagnosis. And this is why you have to have, like, medical professionals involved. You can have, like, you can research this. You can think, okay, this is what there there might be but at some point you have to have a medical professional involved to understand what it is that the person is experiencing because there can be so many different things so they end up taking michael to another place and he gets an examination there and this is where things really change and i think you need to really pay attention to this part because um it talks about how antipsychotics don't treat this after more than an hour of questions and note-taking, a couple things stood out. First, Michael's psych physical ailments seemed to start sometime after their summer trip to Mexico and before his psychotic break. Second, the antipsychotics weren't helping. Nicole gently lifted up Michael's shirt to begin a physical exam, and she noticed some scratch-like marks that fanned out across his armpit and thigh. And this is where she sees that this might be bacteria, this could be an infection, which is completely different than mental illness. And it turns out that it is, in fact, cat scratch fever. He has cat scratch fever. That is why he was so pissed off at their cat. This is one of the things that I really wanted to get into, by the way, is that um, often whenever there are psychotic symptoms that seem like out of the blue, they don't really seem to have a logic to them. If, if you stick around long enough, you'll find out that there probably is a kind of logic that is trying to be communicated, but the person doesn't know how to, to express it. But all of Michael's actions towards the cat, very, very strange, always thinks that the cat is causing everything, and the cat is, is making all of these, these things worse. The cat is a demon from the devil or whatever. They end up having to like, give the cat away to someone else at some point because of this. Well, it turns out the cat did actually cause it. Like He was right. It's just that like, not in any way that made sense at the time. This is one of the reasons very upsetting to see this stuff happen with the cat in Smile, by the way, because usually whenever people have either mental illness or just conditions like this, they, in fact, I don't want to say usually, I want to say at all times, like, they don't take this out on other people. They don't inflict harm on other beings as a symptom of their mental illness. Um... Whenever that boy finds the cat in the present box in Smile, um, it's a pretty bad moment. I can see how everybody's, like, you know, horrified and they're staring at her and everyone's, like, you know, acting like she's basically awful. And um, that actually, in real life, would have been a moment where they could have reached out to her and said, Hey, this is really messed up. What's going on? Are you okay? That would have been a call for help and in fact that probably wouldn't have been what was in the box in real life if she had put something into the present box for the kid that wasn't actually his present it probably would have been something really strange and cryptic that would have made somebody talk with her and engage with her not a dead cat and like i i don't know how the cat dies in the movie uh but um it, it is really concerning to see so much um so much danger attached to having mental illness like you know she she has this condition she has this demon or whatever it's never really explained which it is and it, it might be an allegory for mental illness in which case gross um but it really does just outright say like people with mental illness are dangerous and you should avoid them i mean there's even a point or in Matt Pat shows it in his video. Like there's a prisoner in jail who like runs away from her and can't be near her because he finds out that she's got the the smile virus too and he he thinks that she's dangerous now that he knows that she's infected. She's got a mental illness so he's got to get away from her. It's just demonstrated right there on screen. Um like there are many times where it seems like she is in fact the danger to everyone and in fact she passes it on to somebody else in her life in the end because like, 
they basically keep association with her. If he, he would have abandoned her, then he would have kept himself safe. So, um, it's it's very it's very awful to see mental illness depicted in this way. If this is an intentful way to depict mental illness, and by the way, I am critiquing the movie for that. Um, I think that Matt Pat was actually starting with a very good idea. It's just that actually, these are very complex things. This is a very complex issue. Um, unfortunately, nothing about mental health or mental illness or even physical illness, because like, if this is cat scratch fever, then, I mean, in fact, there's a cat in the movie. What if it was cat scratch fever? Like, that's just, that's how bad it is, right? Like, you, you don't know if it's schizophrenia. You don't know if that medication is going to treat it. You don't know what's going to treat it. So you need the support of people around you while you make the journey of figuring that out. One of the biggest things is that she would have never been able to um, figure out her own dosage in the first place. Even if she had gotten access to, to anti-schizophrenia pills and had decided to take them. Like, again, she's self-diagnosing, which is not a great thing. Um, she should be talking to one of her peers in the hospital. Like, she could talk to a fellow doctor and say, these are all the things I'm experiencing. Sure sounds like mental illness to me, right? But I don't know, because I'm the one who's experiencing it. Could you help? Um, I mean, like, basically, I think that she should have handled it completely differently in the movie. But I noticed that most movies about the health system, about mental illness, about even just physical illness, uh, do not depict any of it in in any way that it actually happens in real life or any way that people should be doing it in real life. It's all sensationalized for a good story or whatever. In the end, she needs to be made into a villain so you can tell the horror story that this is trying to be. But the horror story that is mental illness is actually a lot worse. Um, I think that if you wanted to see it depicted a lot more subtly, I would actually see, of all things, the movie Hereditary. Um, because that's not about mental illness, but it does demonstrate a few times what it would be like if somebody is experiencing, like, psychosis. Um, the thing is, both of them are not a very good depiction of mental illness for this one particular reason. And, and this is, like, I think the, the heart of, of the whole problem with the movie and everything. So I could say that psychosis is just one symptom, and she's also experiencing other symptoms such as um, paranoia. Paranoia, by the way, is um, it, it's probably not what you think it is. Um, it is a heightened sense, of, a heightened state of being. You could call it even emotion, in a way, and um, it causes people to very rapidly make conclusions to basically get out of danger as soon as possible. It's why you typically have um paranoia on set with say ptsd because people are flashing back to a situation that reminds them of danger um paranoia would uh set in to quickly protect themselves from whatever it is that the danger is of course when there is no danger then paranoia shows itself as like basically a symptom of mental illness she's experiencing paranoia a lot the kind of thinking that she is exhibiting in the movie is very paranoid thinking, which means you don't really have a way to think, oh my gosh, I better change my dosage of my uh, schizophrenia medication, which she's not taking yet. Um, like, you, you don't really have a chance to like slow down and think about it because paranoia doesn't let you do that. Um, paranoia is a weird kind of thinking where you don't actually think with the, like, part of the cerebral cortex in front that uh the prefrontal cortex up here in part of your brain that basically does logical thought um paranoia is like could we bypass that to go faster cool i've got some really great ideas um and that has nothing to do with psychosis that is not about hallucinating it's about jumping to conclusions extremely fast um paranoia can get you out of danger paranoia can also put you in danger so that's one symptom she's experiencing. And then there's, of course, anxiety and depression, which are exhibiting as well. And in some severe cases, you can have somebody with anxiety and depression and they are experiencing psychosis because of it. Like the, the psychosis is happening because of another thing. So you've got like a whole constellation of symptoms. Um, but even then, what if it's not a mental illness? What if it's not a physical illness? 
Because in the movie, it's not. It's not a mental illness in the movie. In the movie, it is very clearly supernatural. In Hereditary, it's also very clearly supernatural. There's only so many comparisons you can draw to mental illness because of this. They have a different explanation for what the heck is going on. This guy has an explanation. The guy that's in jail, he has an explanation for why he's not dead. And he basically solved the smile virus for him. That's like what another video solving the smile virus basically said was like, you know, well, one thing you can do is just like, you know, um, kill one person in front of another person and that other person gets so messed up that they get the virus instead, which, you know, or they get the demon instead, because this is apparently supposed to only be able to do things to one person at a time. So therefore, none of this was mental illness in the first place and none of it acted like mental illness in the first place, which I think is a very good description of how the movies are when it comes to mental illness, uh, which is particularly regretful considering that Smile is like set in a mental illness hospital. Um, like it's set in a hospital in like the section where they deal with people who have mental illnesses. Um, like she's a therapist, the main character of the story. Um, so like... <sighs> Talk about someone who doesn't act like they regularly do therapy with patients, though. Um, one of the big criticisms I have is that if they if she's dealing with patients that are that are so self endangering, why the heck does she have a ceramic or glass vase on the table in the middle? Um, the furniture that they have in Smile in that uh, room, wherever she's like first interviewing the the patient who ends up offing herself in front of her and causing this whole thing, the the girl who originally has the Smile virus. Um, they have this really heavy, heavy furniture, like these heavy chairs. And those actually are in like places where people like get checked in for mental mental health problems a lot. But it's basically furniture you can't throw. So they've got furniture you can't throw, but they've got a uh, in the middle of them, they've got a breakable vase. And that's ridiculous. It should be a plastic vase or it should should just should not exist. Um like in these institutions like they take away your shoelaces and stuff so you can't hurt yourself with them it, it's ridiculous that that thing was there for her to um destroy herself with in the first place and i really i really think that movies like this have to lie about mental illness and the medical system to tell their story that they want to tell and i think that's a very dishonest thing um to do when it comes to mental illness and pretty sad because i think that the actual story like the the premise of the movie is actually pretty interesting and i also think it's a very helpful way to demonstrate psychosis it's just that the things that it's saying about mental health patients the things it's saying about mental illness in the movie i really disagree with um i really disagree with just how much it's implied that she is harming those around her or she is a harm to those around her um like it, it the movie implies that distancing herself isolating was a bad idea but the reason it was a bad idea is because um the the thing was tricking her into luring that guy over there if if he hadn't shown up then everything would have been okay is basically what the movie says like um and that's not okay <laughs> Uh, she was in the right place in the first place. She was actually in a hospital the whole time, and that's where she should have stayed. Um, she should have just gone ahead and checked herself in. I know that it would have disrupted her life to some extent, but considering she had, like, patients she was responsible for, it would have been, like, the responsible thing for her to do to stop doing her job for a while and, like, treat this as a mental health episode. Like, especially because... If she's such a danger to others, then at least it could have put her in a place where she wouldn't have been a danger to others, which is kind of the whole point. So there are facilities for this. Also, there are numbers you can call if you need to talk to somebody. Like, the, if you if you don't have a therapist, most people don't. Um, by the way, it's hard to get a therapist. You, need a, you often need to find the right therapist, um, and you need to be able to find them on your health insurance, um, and you need to be able to find them uh, usually within your locality. Because of that, um, there is online mental health therapy stuff available, but some of it's pretty sketch, um, and it's just like not always going to be the in-depth treatment that you need. So this stuff can be hard, um, but there's always a place that you can start the journey. It's just that if you have a demon possessing you, then your schizophrenia medication isn't going to treat it. So I don't know what to do with this supernatural stuff here. Like, I, I feel that movies like this are a bit dishonest. Like, uh, I want to contrast Hereditary again. Hereditary is basically all about a demon possessing people. So 
it doesn't try to say, oh, well, actually, they were mental ill the whole time. Like, no, it's like, yeah, it's a demon. Whereas uh, Smiles, uh, not very honest in what's going on. Like, it shows a demon, but the demon is, like, you know, embodying her, like, childhood issues with her mother and stuff so like what if it was like her mental health stuff all along but but then the other guy is going to get the smile virus now because of this thing so like then there is actually a smile virus it's like this is not how mental health works it's not how mental illness works um i wish that they would have given some more explanation for what is working here and, and how it actually works instead it's um i mean honestly i saw the original video the original short film short that smile was based on and i think that that told a more concise story i don't know if if it needed a whole movie to convey all of this i don't think there were a lot of of deep ideas there is the problem um like it's one of those things where i i thought about it. it's like well, what would i do and it's like well the thing is um i'm already in a household that like knows how to deal with mental illness problems when it comes to this so we would use our coping mechanisms that we've already learned now, the thing is, you're going to have to train up your coping mechanisms if you want to use coping mechanisms to um, treat symptoms that the smile virus has. So, for instance, coping mechanisms. Um, one big thing, and I'd like to point this out, is having an animal. Look at this. This is a cat. This is a live cat. And you can, like, hold it to your chest, and you can get biofeedback that helps you and makes you feel better and completely combats the symptoms of paranoia and anxiety and even delusions. Like... She's purring. She's having a good time. We're having a good time together. Actually, having a pet is a really good way to deal with mental illness, which is one of the reasons why I really hate the fact that the, there's a, a non-alive cat in the movie that's so central to showing that she's, like, a dangerous person. Because the opposite typically happens in real life. Like, you're encouraged to get a pet if you have mental health problems. Um, the thing is, not only do you have, like, chances like this to engage with another living creature that's giving you good biofeedback, but also you care for another being, which keeps you in touch with time, in touch with, like, any kinds of, uh, routines and patterns that are hard to get into whenever you're feeling so distanced from life. When, when you're, um, having stuff like delusions and paranoia and anxiety, it's very easy to dissociate. And when you dissociate, it's very easy to keep to, to lose track of time. Um, often, whenever people are off their medication, it's because they're not able to keep track of when they should be taking it. Um, so that's why you typically get a lot of things to help with uh, that. For instance, people who have medications that they need to be taking regularly like that, you typically see that they have pill counters, they have pill calendars. Um, those are little, like, plastic pockets that are like monday wednesday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday you have each pill that you need for the day there um there are timed caps for pill bottles that will actually like show how long has it been since you've taken your medication that way um you like what if you miss your medication but you're not aware that you missed your medication how are you going to deal with that um the timed cap kind of helps you keep keep in touch with that um because the thing is if you're not having full awareness of reality, how can you be aware of enough of reality to take your medication? It's a classic problem. I know. It's a big problem. So, um, those are a few things that I, I really wanted to get into. It's really not entirely about the theory. I think that the theory is has a few problems in it. I also just don't think the theory is going to keep you alive. Like, I don't think the theory is the solution for the smile virus, smile demon, smile whatever. Um, I like saying smile virus because it just kind of like has a ring to it. Um, but whatever's going on with the smile thing, like I feel that the movie is badly put together in this way. There is not a good solution for it because the movie wants to have that twist in the end. And so it's really sacrificing, uh, enough of a consistent world to work within, to stay alive to tell this kind of gotcha sort of story and i think that's the the real problem with it um it, it kind of strikes me as similar to it follows in that there doesn't seem to really be any any good way out of it um because that's supposed to be kind of the whole point this is a very campfire story uh kind of thing where there's really no there's no finale there's no ending 
Um, so anyway, um, I love the film theorists, love the game theorists, love Matt Pat's videos. I'm glad that he did this video. I just wish that um, he'd been aware of some of these issues. So I'm just trying to make him and pretty much anybody else aware. These are the mental issues that you have, or mental issues. These are the issues that you have when it comes to mental health and mental illness. Um, they're not all of them. This is just like one person's angle on things. Um, and I, uh, I know this can be very difficult to research and very difficult to explore. Um, I suggest getting off of WebMD and, um, getting off of the diagnosis type sites, leaving the DSM behind for a little bit and, um, looking at like, say the blogs and sites of actual people who experience this, maybe some organizations that are there for the treatment of specific mental illnesses because they have a lot more hands-on help. Whereas the stuff like WebMD and the DSM, like the DSM is a, is a, is a tool for diagnosing, the diagnosing things. If you are a, a qualified medical professional. And the problem is that if you're not, it can be easy to misinterpret it. Um, and when it comes to stuff like WebMD, it, like I almost call it a scraper site. It's, it's very formulaic. It's not very nuanced. Um, and it's, it's not a very good way of finding out what's going on with you. To, to research this stuff, it's hard. Medical stuff is hard. That's <laughs> why it's, it takes a long time and it's very expensive to get a degree <laughs> in, in the medical field. Um, and, like, um, so I don't know how I would have, have approached that theory video, to be honest. I think maybe looking more, like I said, at the symptoms instead of the diagnosis, because um, like even with schizophrenia, there are several different types of schizophrenia. It exhibits different ways in different people. Uh, it's always very personal. Like that's one of the biggest things is that all of this is always very personal. It's your own brain and your own thoughts and your own mind. And mental illness kind of takes all of that and uses it as Legos to build its own castle in your brain without your permission. And so... Um, you know, it's always going to be different. Um, I, I don't know, like, I'm glad that we're here having this conversation and, uh, thanks for watching my video. Bye.